I wish I could tell you that everybody I've ever sat down and talked to that I've never had that thought. But if the truth be told, amen, it's happened on a few occasions. I'm not saying that's around here. Amen. Don't look at nobody. They're looking at you. It's you. Don't look at nobody. Amen. But don't worry. I ain't going to call your name out while I'm standing here. Have I got a witness? Y'all don't even know when to laugh. So y'all don't even know what to do with God. Amen. But brothers and sisters, it's a true question we need to ask ourselves. This is a true question that everybody, I'm talking about everybody needs to ask. What I want to do is, I want us to take this test in our minds this morning. It's not a written test. And I've talked many times, I preach, I love to preach about tests because we all go through tests. But this morning, I want to talk about taking the test. I want to talk about taking the test. I want to walk you through a test. And I want to give you some scriptures, amen, that's going to give you the test. I'm not going to really give it to you. The scripture is, and it's going to give you this test of evaluating whether you're not, or you're walking in the faith, or you're not walking in the faith. And I want you to stay with me. Let's see how quiet y'all are. Y'all supposed to be saying, go ahead, preacher. We're ready to take the test. We're going, go ahead. Come on, preacher. Help us. Go ahead, preacher. Perhaps. Perhaps y'all might be scared y'all not going to pass the test. Amen. 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 But it's okay. It's okay. I promise you, if you don't pass the test this morning, amen. If you don't pass it this morning, I can promise you before we get out of here today, we will make sure that you have a chance to get that right. Amen. <laughs> because we must never assume that anybody is in the faith. And I can say that in my personal testimony because my wife's sitting right back there on that bench right there against the wall trying to hide right there and cover up, amen, because I'm going to call her out. No, I'm just kidding. She sang in the choir. She served in ministry in the church, done all the work around the church years ago, I'm talking about, and was lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Yep. And Holy Ghost conviction come across her for a few Sundays, after Sunday after Sunday, gripping the back of the chair, being an invitation. And she would ask me, and she would say to me, she said, I, I, I know, I, I, I think I remember. I, I, I got to go back and ask Mama when I got saved. <laughs> And I'm yeah. like, well, if you gotta ask somebody, that's right. If you gotta ask somebody, you probably ain't got it. Amen. Hey. I'm not saying people don't get you saved, you know. I'm not don't don't take that the wrong way, but I'm just saying, but if you're in your mind, you gotta ask somebody, you need to make that thing right. Amen. Hey. So I want you to take this test. And I told you, if you don't pass it, don't worry, we got we we're gonna get there. And the most important thing you can do, brothers and sisters, is make make sure. Make sure, no matter who you are and who's listening this morning or who's paying attention or not, make sure, make sure by the shadow of a doubt that you're saved. Hey. And I said that on Father's Day. The, the, the most important thing you can do for your family is for them to know that you're saved. Hey. To know that you're saved. And whatever it takes this morning to make that happen, you need to get to the point where that's going to happen. Amen. If God's walking down the aisle and holding his hand out and, and, and there's conviction in your heart, you need to reach out and take him by the hand and make sure you're saved. Mm -hmm. It would be tragic for anybody to walk around in life and think that they're saved, think they got together, and to die and show up in hell. The elevator door will come open and you walk out. And, hey, this ain't where I need to be. Hey. Make sure, brothers and sisters, make sure. Because, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, it's not going to be because the pastor of Genesis Baptist Church, amen, did not challenge you, did not ask you the questions to ask yourself, amen, whether you're truly in the faith or not. I think any, any pastor every once in a while ought to ask his congregation, are you sure? Are you sure you're walking in the faith? I mean, are you sure you got this thing nailed down? So, Brother Frank, keep on, get, get on with it, amen, what's the test? Ain't nobody saying nothing, so I'm going to say it for you. I mean, what, what's the test, Brother Frankie? I'm glad you asked the question. What's I mean. the test? I'm glad y'all asked. I'm going to go right quick to, to 1 John chapter number 1. I'm going to move. I'm going to move quick. I'm going to jump around a little bit. You can try to follow me if you want to or just jot them down. Uh, 1 John chapter number 1. I got just a few verses, but I'm going to start looking right here. And the threefold test is mentioned in 1 John chapter number 1. Now, I'm not talking about the gospel of John. I'm talking about 1 John. The first epistle of John, chapter number one. I'm going to look at just a few verses, five, six, and seven right here. Because, in fact, this gives us a test to examine our own hearts. Here's what verse five says. The Bible says, this is the message which we have heard of him and declared to you. Here's the message which we've heard of him 
and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Y'all missed the first place to shout right there this morning. Amen. Now, now, stay with me. This gives us an indication, brothers and sisters, of what the first question of the test is. And here it is. This is what I saw just jumped off the pages of me. It's a question that you need to ask yourself. And the question is, what do you believe? What do you believe? I want you to think about that. Let that sink in. Write that down if you need to. But look, look, what do you believe this morning? That's a question that you must ask yourself. I mean, that's a question that any believer, you have to ask yourself, what do I believe? Do you believe that God is light? Do you believe that this morning? That's what the scripture says, amen. And everything I believe, amen, my hat hangs on what the Bible says. Amen. I believe he's light this morning. Do you believe that in him there's no darkness at all? Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that God is the light of the world? Do you believe? Do you believe, brothers and sisters? Do you believe the gospel, amen? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you believe, truly believe, he is the light of the world? Do you believe Jesus was born of a virgin? He died on the cross for our sins. He was raised from the dead, and he's coming again. Do you believe amen. in Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you believe this man? Here's the core of our faith. I mean, this, this, it, 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 just, you can sum it all up right here. Everything I believe right here. We believe. That's, that's it. Right? Everything I hang my head on is I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about do you just believe in the existence of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Because it's more than just believing that Jesus existed. It's more than just believing he was here. Amen. Right. Because the devil knows that Jesus existed. Amen. If I got a witness right there. Amen. But do you believe? I'm asking you this question. Here's the first question. Do you truly believe he is the light of the world? Do you believe he was born of a virgin? I'm going to ask you again. It's important and to, to recognize and realize, amen, that he was born of a virgin. Now, I know it ain't Christmas. It ain't no Christmas message this morning. But we talk about this a lot around Christmas. Because this is the reason why I say this. The Muslims believe he was born. They believe he was born. The Muslims believe that Jesus existed. Amen. And they believe that he was a good prophet. That's what they believe. They accept him as a prophet. But, but they, they don't believe he was born of a virgin. And they don't believe he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. They believe that he was born and conceived by man. And brothers and sisters, the reason the birth and birth of Jesus is important, amen, it's because of the fact that he was born of a virgin. That means, look, Mary didn't even know no man, amen. And if she was impregnated by the Holy Ghost, that would give him qualifications by virtue of the fact, amen, that his blood is not like the rest of our blood, amen. It's not tainted by sin, amen. It's made to wash away our sins, amen. you got to believe. There's some things you got to believe in this morning. He was born of a virgin. You got to believe he was crucified on the old rugged cross. Do you believe? Yeah. What do you believe? Do you believe that he died on the cross? Do you believe that? Do you believe it was sufficient enough to take care of all of our sins? I mean, do you believe that? I mean, what do you truly deep down in your in your soul? What do you believe? And Brother Franklin, why do you say that? Why do you keep asking me these questions? Because I told you a while ago, there's a lot of folks I see, a lot of folks in the circle of the ministry, a lot of folks hanging around the church now trying to work their way into heaven. Mm -hmm. A lot of them trying to work their way into heaven and do what they want to do, and it ain't got nothing to do with what God wants done. Amen? <laughs> if you think you can work your way into heaven, amen, what you're saying is what Jesus done on the cross is not good enough for my sins to be washed away. That's what you're saying if you think you can work your way in. I'm not trying to work my way in, amen. My works cannot get me into heaven. My works are never going to be good enough to get me there, amen. I can only get to heaven by the blood of Jesus. Christ died on the cross for my sins and your sins. i got to believe that, amen. I've got to stand on it. i got to believe in the finished work of the cross. That's the only thing that's going to get us in. And not only that. He was buried. 
I said he was buried. Amen. That burial part is important too, brothers and sisters. And I've said it many times, and this is a good place to kick it in again, amen, and again, and again, and put it in one more time, and again, and again. Not only did he die on the cross for our sins, but he was buried. Now, Brother Franklin, what's that got to do with anything? Why is that important? Well, because his burial means that when he went in the grave, he took mine and your sins in there with him. <laughs> God missed it again. Amen. When he died and went in the grave, he took all our baggage, all our junk in there with him. Amen. Y'all missed it again. Y'all ought to be saying something. Y'all know y'all were born. I, some of y'all born saved. You, you got it all together. You ain't ever bounced no check. I mean, everything going hunky door at your house. You ain't ever had your water cut off to you. Come on, here to talk right there. The power bill always paid on time. You got everything all together. Amen. You ain't ever had no bad thoughts in your mind. You ain't thought about cussing nobody out lately. Everything's good. We ain't hating on you. God bless you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you come to church this morning. But I ain't talking to you right now. I want to talk to the folk like me. We messed up royally sometimes in the course of our life. Somebody ought to help me talk right there. I'm glad to you know he took my sins and he buried them in that grave when he died. Amen. And he ain't going to lie to nobody else to bring them up and pull my pants back up against me. Amen. Amen. Satan cannot do that. That's why you got to be reminded that every time the devil tries to bring up your past, just go ahead and just open to the back of the book and show him his future. Let him know how this story ends. We know the end. Amen. Amen. We win in the end if we trust in Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. You got to remind yourself. I have to remind myself sometimes. I get so downtrodden sometimes and say, Satan gets on my back. I have to remind myself I am in Christ. I am walking in the faith. I will not be defeated. Amen. Right. Lord, help us this morning, amen. amen. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, amen. And I'm thankful for that this morning. But you got to remind yourself, when Satan comes against you, yeah, I've done that, but that's not where I'm at today. Right. That's not where I'm at today. That's the look. I tell you all the time, never judge a man by the chapter you walk in on, amen. That's just a chapter of his life. Don't base his whole story on one chapter you walk in on. Right. We've been washed. We've been clean. I mean, I, I'm clean. I'm just like a fresh skin catfish this morning. I'm clean. Amen. Hey, somebody help me. Amen. My shackles have been broke. Amen. I'm a brand new creation. Amen. God washed me and made me clean. Amen. I've taken all my sins away. And the good news, brothers and sisters, is you don't have to feel guilt ever again about anything. No more guilt because he took it in the grave. Amen. That's right. The Bible says, well, there's, therefore now, no condemnation, amen, to those who are in Christ Jesus. Have I got a witness, amen? amen. Ain't you glad it all went in the grave with him? It's gone, amen? Tell the enemy, he can't condemn you no more, amen? He'll never condemn you again, amen? I knew I had a towel up. Y'all ain't got my blood pressure up, you know? Amen. And I said all that to say this, because so many people, so many people I know, and even some of us right here are living a life full of guilt and shame of our past. Amen. When your past has been forgiven, right. it's gone, brother. Far as the east is from the west, never to be from the north is to the south, in the deepest part of the sea, never to be brought up again. Right. The only person going to bring it up in your mind is Satan. He's got those little tricks. That's right. He knows how to slip in. Amen. Amen. Little, little crack, he puts his toe in the door. And I done told y'all, y'all know, amen. You, you let him get in the door, amen. He comes in, he comes over to your chair, amen. He sits down. Look, you done poured a big glass of Kool-Aid. He's sitting over there. Next thing you know, he's got a remote. He's changing the channel, amen. Look, don't let him in your life and remind you of what amen. you used to be. You're telling who you are today, amen. Right. We have to believe. I said we have to believe, brothers and sisters. We have to believe today. Not only he died on the cross, amen, and that he was buried, but it even gets better, amen. There's a kicker in there, amen. Whoa! Here's what separates us. Here's what separates him. Here's what separates our belief. Here's what separates him and puts him apart. Puts him apart from Buddha, from Muhammad. From Confucius, amen, and all the other ones out there claim to be the, 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 the truth, like, well, I, I don't know what, I don't even know, I, that crazy, worshiping cows and stuff don't even make no sense to me, amen. All this other stuff out there. Look, what separates him? Yeah, he died. Yeah, he went in the grave. But right early, Sunday morning, amen, 
He came out of the grave. Amen. And look, the grave could not hold him. Y'all know I told that story about Mr. Death. Amen. How he said he had him. Amen. And the grave said, I'll keep him. No, it can't nobody hold him down. Amen. Right. He came out. Look, he got up with all power in his hand. Amen. And he's alive and well. Amen. He's real. I'm telling you, he's real this morning. He's alive. Amen. He's moving among us if we'll let him. Amen. He conquered, he conquered death. He defeated the devil. He took the keys of the, of, of the of hell and the grave. Amen. And the question is, do you believe that? Do you believe this morning, brothers and sisters? And not only did he get raised from the dead, whoop, hey, this keeps getting better. The Bible says he's coming back, amen. I said he's coming back, amen, to see about it. He's coming back to get us, amen, go call us home, amen. Y'all missed another shout. Y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. Y'all stayed up too late last night. Maybe your power was off like mine. You were mad. It was hot up in the house. Amen. But look, y'all need to give God a hand clap of praise right now. Y'all need to let him know he's worthy this morning. Amen. Hey, if you believe this morning, give him some praise. Amen. If you really believe he was coming back this morning, amen, some folk wouldn't keep on living like they live. If you truly believe, that's the reason why I had to ask these questions. I mean, don't get mad at the preacher. I'm just telling you what God laid on my heart. Amen. I if you really believe he was coming back like he says he is, there's some things that would change in your life. And I'm talking about myself right now. I ain't even talking to y'all because I, I really had to reevaluate my life this week. God let some things flash before my eyes. Amen. And y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. I, I said he let some things come before amen. me that, that he reminded me about. I mean, if you really believe. It was showing the way you live, amen. Right. If you truly believe that he might crack the sky today, amen, you would have lived last week a little bit different than you did. Yeah. Right. Come on, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to make you think, amen. I'm not I'm not casting no doubt, no judgment on nobody. Don't look at nobody, amen. If they're looking at you, they, they just you, amen. But don't look at nobody right now. <laughs> I was trying to prove a point this morning. That's the first test. What do you believe? What do you truly believe? Deep down in your heart, believe. What do you believe this morning, brothers and sisters? Because your belief, what you believe, is going to dictate this second thing and just throw on you. In verse number five, God is light. And the Bible says that in him is no darkness. That you have faith in him. What's your faith in this morning? Is it in him? Is it in your bank account? Is it in your house? Is it in like, come on. Y'all just stay with me. Amen. Here's number two. He says in verse number six, he says that we have Fellowship with him. They walk in darkness. We lie. Think about that. If we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. We're lying. And do not the truth. Don't get mad. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Here's the second question, brothers and sisters. Here's the second test. Verse number one, what do you believe? Number two, what do you practice? What do you practice? Did y'all notice it got real extra quiet right then? Yeah. I mean, it got, I just heard another gnat fly by. Hey, man, it got so quiet. Come on. Mm. I had to ask myself that question all the time. What do I practice? Mm -hmm. What do I practice? What do you practice this morning, brothers and sisters? The Bible says, the text we're in this morning, it says, if you say you're saved, and you say you have fellowship, but you walk in darkness, the Bible says you're a liar. Mm -hmm. I don't expect no hollering right through there. It's quiet. It is quiet up in here. Hey. <laughs> but I'm preaching the truth, brother and sister. We're going to get this down the street to some other places. Amen. They ain't going to say it. Hey. I'm telling the truth this morning. Jot these verses down if you write them. But I ain't got, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do this. First John, chapter number two, I was in verse, I was in chapter one, it's just a page over. Let me read this right quick. Verses three through six. You can turn there, it's just a page over. First John, chapter number two, verse three through, uh, three through six. I'm going to read it right quick. The Bible says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Verse number two says, he said, I know him. And keep him not his commandments is a lie. And the truth is not in him. Yeah. Did y'all notice he says the same thing twice? Yeah. But who keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. And 
He that saith he abided in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Just as Jesus walked, is what he's saying. In other words, let me get to the meat right here. That key word walk. Going back to verse number six in first John one. I know I'm moving a lot, just stay with me. Going back to that, that in, in, uh, in first John, verse number six. It says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, now think about this. This key word walk, this is the word I studied this week. The key of that word walk means what's the ongoing pattern of your life? What is it that you do on a regular basis in your walk? That, that the ongoing pattern of your life, what is it that you do regularly? What is it that you do all the time? What is it that you do continually? What's the pattern of your life? If you have a pattern, brothers and sisters, of continuing to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and there's no guilt, there's no conviction, the Holy Ghost never leans over and whispers in your ear, and there's nothing poking in the side every once in a while, and you yeah. wonder where it comes from, yeah. and, 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 and it's saying, leave that alone, and you keep on running back. Nothing's talking to you, and, 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 and nothing's whispering in your head telling you to leave that alone. Yeah. You better reinvestigate right. whether you're not you are walking in the faith. Right. Right. You better check up. Yeah. You better check up, I mean, and make sure that you're walking in the faith. Because I'm telling you what I know right now and what I believe. That this is it right here. That when you have a relationship with God and the Holy Ghost lives inside of you and you start practicing and participating in stuff that you ain't got no business practicing and participating in, amen, and the Holy Ghost starts bringing conviction on you, he starts talking to you, he starts telling you, hey, you look, are you supposed to be doing that? Are you supposed to be talking to that person? Should you be going down there? Should you be stopping bottles rattling when you get in the car, when you get off of work? I mean, are you supposed to be watching that on TV? Are you supposed to stop over there? You ain't supposed to be talking to them. I mean, right. look, are, are, are you supposed to be looking at those pictures? Are you supposed to be picking up that magazine? Are you supposed to be turning on the internet that late at night? You know better than that. If Jesus is sitting right beside you, would you do the very things you do that you do? Amen. Check up. What you practice, brothers and sisters, is the routine that you've accepted in your life for your life. Amen. And you've come to this, that's just acceptable to me. Now, listen to me. Let me be clear on something right here. Amen. None of us are perfect. Amen. I got one. Amen. I said, none of us are perfect. Amen. Right. We all got our issues. Amen. We all got shortcomings. But brothers and sisters, this is what I'm talking about, amen. This right here is it, amen. What you've accepted that you feel no conviction about. What's some things in your life that you feel no conviction about at all that you know is wrong? You need to check up, brothers and sisters. I believe that the Holy Ghost will keep talking to you when you did something that you ain't got no business doing. Right. If he's living inside of you, there's conviction coming. And you know what? It's even quieter than it was a while ago. <laughs> I know this is going to be rough this morning. I didn't need something to tell you much about it. I mean, I just know how this one was going to be this morning. I can't help it. It's what God laid on my heart. Amen. Because, brothers and sisters, I have a responsibility from God as your pastor, amen, to challenge you on some things every once in a while. Amen. It all can't be canning us hanging off the lights and hollering and running. Right. And it can't always amen. be that kind of preaching, amen. Because I don't want nobody in this church or anybody watching online, amen, I don't want nobody to think that you can keep just living any kind of old way and keep on doing the same old things and have a right relationship with God. That's right. I'm not saying we don't have problems, but there's some things that we need to check up on every once in a while. Church, I want you to understand, but I want to be real clear. Paul raises this question with them because back in court, amen, watch this. They knew the scriptures. They knew, they knew what was right and wrong, amen, but somehow, they had reason in their mind. Watch this. They had reason in their mind, and they were able to get past and bypass what the scriptures were saying. When's the last time you tried to justify something in your mind that you know you didn't have no business doing? You know what the Bible said about it? Hey. Yeah. You know, just being real, brothers and sisters. Paul said, I can't believe y'all calling yourselves the saints of the most high holy God. I cannot believe that. Amen. That you have a relationship with him, but you're practicing the things that you practice as normal. 
Not saying we don't have mistakes, and don't like saying we don't make mistakes and have hiccups and stumble sometimes along the way. But if you keep practicing that thing and it comes regular over and over and over and over, it's a problem in your life, brothers and sisters. And Paul, he, this is what he said. He said, "Let me do this. Let me say this. Examine yourself." That's where I started. Amen. Amen. Examine yourself and see. And I want to, I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, I want to say to all of y'all, I love you enough to tell you, examine. Yourself every once in a while. Right. And see whether you're in the faith or not. Right. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I know, I know, I know it's rough. Amen. We're going to end on the note, I hope. Amen. <laughs> I don't believe that you have a good relationship with God and you walk on with Him and that He'll allow you to keep doing some things that you're doing and no conviction coming about it at all. Right. Have I got a witness? Right. It's one thing to fight. To conquer sin. And I admire people, amen, who fight and toil and struggle and bend and fight and kick and everything to do things right. I mean, I admire them. They may fall down, but they get back up. I mean, they clean themselves off. Let God dust their crazies up off and send them on the way. They do right, amen. But I'm bothered, brothers and sisters, by people who just lay down in the mud. They stay in the mud, amen. They make it their house, amen. In the mud, they buy a couch. They get a coffee table. They just get real comfortable, amen. They set up an address in the mud, amen. And the next thing you know, and they invite their friends over to the mud day in. They just live there. And they're confident right there. And they're all right, amen. And welcome people into the mess. No, we can't do that. I, look, don't talk about I'm only human, amen. You better get out of that state of mind if you think, well, it's just a little something, amen. You're a child of the most high God. You got Jesus living inside you. I don't believe you can keep living in open sin and call yourself a Christian. You can't stay there. I ain't saying we don't visit there sometimes and make mistakes. Don't get me wrong this morning, but you cannot stay there and dwell in that. I was witnessing to a young man at work. I won't call his name. I won't make him mad. I've been trying to reach him. Amen. And I heard a preacher. I told you a couple of weeks ago, a preacher said something, stirred something so so much in my soul that it, that it caused me to approach this young man and start talking to him. I had to, I had to, brothers and sisters. Hey. He's living, he's living with his girlfriend, but he was talking about going to church and what all they was doing at the church. Mm. And it bothered me. Mm. It bothered me. I, I had to go to him and witness to him that him living with his girlfriend was wrong. Y'all ain't got to say nothing, amen. You're right. I'm going to preach all of this, amen. Y'all ain't got to right. say nothing. He was trying to tell me, well, we both go to church. He said, two clean sheets don't make no dirt. I said, they do if you ain't married. That's right. Amen. I just to make sure it's still on, amen. I was trying my best to put... Used to, I would have just condemned him to hell. I mean, I, mean, I ain't going to lie to you. Early in my ministry, I would have just, 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 just wrote him off and walked off. Amen. But my, my, my spirit has changed. Who was really changed. Right. Amen. Amen. Really changed. He, he, he was trying. He got defensive about it. I told him, I said, wrong, brother, if you ain't married. I'm just telling you, it's wrong. I don't hate on you. I love you. I'm going to pray for you in the family. But I got to tell you, it's wrong. Mm. That's right. I tried my best to explain the sin of fornication to him without pushing him away and hurting him. Yeah. And by sharing my own personal testimony, I reached him. Amen. I reached him by sharing instead of getting mad and said, you know what? That's right. I told him, I said, many years ago, matter of fact, probably 10 or 29 years ago, me and Miss Cleveland, we lived together before we got married. Yep, oh. sure did. We lived together. Yeah. Now, because I wasn't saved then, I didn't know nobody. That's right. What I tried to tell him, I said, no, I've done that in my own stupidity, but I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I didn't have nobody tell me it was wrong. Didn't nobody call me out well until Tina's granny got a hold of us. <laughs> yeah. Amen. If the church was open, she shouted the doors every time the church doors was open. Yeah. Amen. And she told us that we was living in open sin and that we needed to get married. Mm. And what did we do? I ain't want to, but we got married. Amen. <laughs> no, we got married. Because somebody shared some truth on me and told me the truth. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah. And that's what I was trying to do with him. Now, now that I'm saved and I'm trying my best to do better, amen, I know better. I'm going to try to help my brothers and my sisters know that premarital sex is wrong. Right. I know it's going to stay quiet right through here. Hey. Matter of fact, it's wrong after you get married. If it ain't your husband or if it ain't your wife. Hey. Right. I know, I know, I know. So somebody don't have me talk right through here, though. Somebody got to say it. I'm troubled by some of the adulterous relationships I see. And I see, I work around construction. I see some rough stuff sometimes. I hear some bad things. I just have to walk on by. And I try to witness, but some of them just cuss you out. You just got to keep walking. These men hanging around with married women. And these women hanging around with married men. I want to that, but I said, why? Yeah. Amen. I got trouble with that, brothers and sisters. I got trouble. I got problem with that. I, I, I mean, I, it bothers me. And I say that to say, I, I got to say these things sometimes because I don't want nobody to think that we're not a church that preaches holiness. Right. We got to keep it right. I mean, we got to tell right. the truth. Whether we live in the truth or stumbling upon, I mean, we got to tell the truth and believe the truth. I mean, right. we preach the holiness of God in this church. I mean, he calls us to live a holy life. He calls us to live holy. You got to fight to live holy. Amen. This is not no cake walk to stay in the faith and walk right and keep your life. This is a war. Amen. We're fighting against the devil. He's trying to get you on the wrong track, get you to go down the wrong street. But if you are a child of God, you're going to have to do some battle. Amen. You got to get Jesus living on the inside and he will help you live holy. Amen. He'll put his finger on those areas in your life. Amen. Anybody here know? He'll keep that door closed, amen. Woo -woo. He'll swing open another one, amen. Right. He'll cancel out your plans, amen. He'll cancel out what you want to do, amen. I wish I had somebody to help me right here. Who knows what I'm talking about? He'll do it for you, amen. If you just right. fall and go through the right door, amen. Go through the right channels, amen. Navigate yourself through troubled waters, amen. He'll be right there with you. That's right. I'm still in the same point when I'm moving. I didn't say I was going to be done no time today, amen. I didn't say nothing, amen. I ain't say I was about done nothing yet, so y'all just hang with me. <laughs> first John Come on. 3. It's all right here in First John. First John 3. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm almost finished. Oh. No, I ain't, ain't even going to say that loud right now. Ain't <laughs> I ain't got much. Yet. I'm just kidding. Man. First John 3. I told you, verse 6, 7, 8, 9. Listen to it. First John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Let me read that again. Whoso whoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he, meaning Jesus is righteous, is righteous. You can be righteous, amen. Watch this, verse number eight. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Don't you know today, brothers and sisters, that Jesus came to destroy the devil's power over you? Did you not know that this morning? When you walk into faith, I mean, you got you got the power to walk right on through that stuff. Just let roll off your back, amen. amen. You got the power living inside of you. It's in you, amen. I told you last week, you don't have to stay an addict. You don't have to stay on drugs. You don't have to stay a drunkard. You don't have to, I mean, you don't have to stay a liar. You don't have to stay a fornicator. I mean, you don't have to stay an adulterer. You don't have to uh, stay a homosexual. God has the power to change your life. Right. He can change you. You can be free. Amen. If you go through that door. Amen. You got to quit beating on that one, amen? If he did it for somebody else, That's why right. do you think he won't do it for you? That's right. He will, brother and sister. Amen. Look at verse number 9. Verse number 9, chapter number 3 in First John. Whosoever is born of God doeth do, uh, do not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he was born of God. I might have to run thick when I, I mean, that just, I, I don't know about y'all, I may not do nothing for you. In other words, you cannot ever make a sin, a practice in your life, a permanent thing, and be comfortable with it. Right. 
He's never going to leave you alone about it. I told you I'm troubled by people who, who can sin and they ain't got no problem with it. It don't bother them at all. I'm troubled by that. I'm not troubled by people that make mistakes. I'm not troubled by people that fall down and get up. I'm troubled by people that can stay in a sinful life and no conviction is coming in their life. I'm troubled by that. And it bothers me. And we live in a culture, brothers and sisters, where sin is just an acceptable thing. Let nobody say nothing about it. Don't nobody do nothing about it. And everything's just okay. No, I'm not going to go along with it. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to go along with it. The message is not going to change. Hey. They can talk about pulling all the statues down they want to. But look, when they go to go to going against Jesus Christ, That's right. we better bow up. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we better stand up. Hey. Yep. You better get a backbone. Amen. You better get a, a shotgun rifle and a four-wheel drive, whatever it takes. Amen. You better right. bow up when it comes to Jesus Christ. Right. When the silent majority starts getting tired, Amen. You're going to see some things change. Amen. But your pastor loves you enough to tell you that we have to check up sometimes in our life. I'm telling you right now, I'm preaching the best I can. I'm teaching the best I can. I'm going to tell you, you're, going to, you, you, you're not going to be able to stand before God and say, He ain't never tell me. I'm going to close because y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. Amen. Let me close with number three. Here's the final thing. I'm going to hurry. Y'all get number one. What's the first test? What do you believe? What do you believe this morning? What's the second test? What are you practicing? And here's the third one. And I'm going to be finished with this third one. Just a few minutes, I promise. I'm going to look back at 1 John uh, 1 and read verse number 7. The Bible says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. I'm going to read it one more time. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The third question is, how, the third test is, how do you get along with others? How do you get along with other folk? Yeah. It's just getting quieter and quieter and quieter this morning. Ooh, it's tight right there, boy. It's real. That's the rubber beat the road right here. I didn't make this verse up. I don't like it. I want to tear this page out, but I couldn't. Amen. I didn't put it there. It was there when I got to read and I got there. Amen. Yeah. I can tell you something about being in the faith, walking in the faith, and having the fellowship with God. He gives us the ability to fellowship with one another. Hey. And if you can't get along with nobody, I'm talking about you can't get along with nobody, and you don't like nobody, somebody needs to help me right through here. You better reinvestigate whether or not you are in the faith. Hey. Got three witnesses right there. Because one of the byproducts of being in the faith and walking with God, brothers and sisters, is that it gives you the, the desire and the love on the inside of other believers. That's one thing it does. I love every one of y'all. Y'all may say, well, I don't like you, but I love you. I love you. I love every one of you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I do anything in the world for you. I give you the last dollar out of my pocket. You can come fellowship with me anytime. Put your feet up on my table. I love the people of Genesis Baptist Church. I love you. Amen. I do. I love you. That's the byproduct of me being saved. Amen. I love people. Amen. Hey. That desire that love. I, that, 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 that extended all the fellowship. I love y'all. Hmm. But don't tell me you're a child of God and you don't like being around the church, folks. Hey. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me, oh, I'm a 